But when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith still existing on the earth? Luke 18.8 We who are awaiting the blessed hope, namely the epiphany of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that is, when we too will be resurrected in glory when he appears. Titus 2.13 Now because of the increase of lawlessness at that time, the love of the many will cool. But he who endures until the end, this is the one who will be saved. Matthew 24, 12 and 13 This principle is especially applicable to pastor teachers and all others who have ministries upon which others depend. For all who are running a good race in anticipation of the three crowns, the tribulation will very much be the time which tests the quality of that work and no time to shrink back from doing what Jesus expects us to keep doing. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. 2 Chronicles 15.7 Strengthen the hands that are weak. Bolster the knees that are giving way. Say to those with anxious hearts, Be strong. Don't be afraid. Behold, your God will come as an avenger. Your God will come as a rewarder. He will come and He will deliver you. Isaiah 35, 3 and 4 And those among the people who have insight will teach the people who will be persecuted by sword, that is, martyrdom, and flame, that is, torture leading to martyrdom, and captivity, that is, imprisonment, and plundering, that is, confiscation of property, for some time. And when they are persecuted, they will receive a little help. Daniel 11, 33 and 34. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. John 21, 17. Do heed specific divine commands and guidance. In addition to the Holy Scriptures, which provide every believer with voluminous, complete guidance for living the Christian life, during the tribulation there will be specific prohibitions and directives to meet some of its unique circumstances, and paying close heed to these commands, and this guidance will be critical for our spiritual safety. Some of these instructions are no doubt not known at present. We can expect, for example, that in the direction of their worldwide evangelical ministry, Moses and Elijah will have much to say to all believers for our benefit. Some of these tribulation-specific instructions we already know about from Scripture, even if their precise circumstances have not yet been completely revealed. Perhaps the most obvious of these is the prohibition against taking the mark or name of the beast, Revelation 14, 9 through 11. While we do not know as yet of what precisely this will consist, the Bible is so very precise and insistent about the fact that taking this mark or name will result in condemnation that there can be no question or doubt about the need to be equally adamant in our refusal to do so. Given the importance of this specific command, we have devoted a separate point to it. There are, however, others, notably the command to flee Babylon. Responding correctly to this command will require careful attention to God's timing, refraining on the one hand from exiting Babylon before the appropriate time for believers living here during the tribulation yet not hesitating to depart immediately once the command is given. There is a right time for everything, and getting that timing right through heeding God's specific directives in a precise fashion will never be more important than during the tribulation. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Ecclesiastes 3.1 But concerning the times and the seasons, that is, the timeline of future prophecy and its specific events, Brothers, you have no need for anyone to write you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord, that is God's eschatological time of judgment, beginning with the tribulation, is coming just like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and safety, at that precise time destruction will fall swiftly upon them, just like labor pains on a pregnant woman. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 3 do not put any stock in false miracles or false messiahs. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. Matthew 24, 24 
This warning from our Lord himself is very important information to have. Otherwise, not only would there be the danger, for those who are not adequately versed in Scripture, of mistaking Antichrist for Christ, but even believers who do recognize that the beast is the Antichrist and that his prophet is the false prophet, might potentially be led astray by someone else claiming to be Christ or a prophet. As it is during the tribulation, the world, including sadly many Christians, will go following after Antichrist, and certainly not because he is unpersuasive in his performance of signs and miracles and in his pretense of being Jesus Christ. Faithful Christians who truly know their God must assiduously avoid getting wrapped up in the hoopla prophesied to come, whether emanating from the beast himself or from others falsely claiming to be from God. By focusing instead on what the scriptures actually say and not on what our eyes see or our ears hear. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe it. Mark 13, 21. Men will tell you, there he is, or here he is, do not go running off after them. Luke 17, 23. He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and the time is near, do not follow them. Luke 21, 8. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. Mark 13, 23. Do not continue association with individuals and groups co-opted by Antichrist. At Hebrews 10, 25, Paul instructs the Jerusalem believers not to give up meeting together. But what is often overlooked in this passage is the purpose of assembly to encourage one another. And genuine Christian encouragement only comes through the truth of the Word of God, whether from the pastor or from fellow members of the congregation. In our era of Laodicea, association with lukewarm congregations and or denominations, while often a negative thing in spiritual terms, partly because of the waste of the time and effort which could be used to grow in the truth, partly because of the false, legalistic and watered-down teaching, if any, which is the rule in such groups, is not necessarily spiritually fatal. That will not be the case during the tribulation, however, when most, if not all, such groups will be amalgamated into Antichrist's universal religion. Continuing fellowship under those circumstances will not only not be encouraging or spiritually edifying, but will actually be spiritually dangerous in the extreme, since Antichrist, the devil's son, will by then have become the object of worship, not Jesus Christ, not even by way of the tokenism which is often the case today. No fellowship with individual Christians, no matter how prized, will be worth such a fundamental compromise. And no individual Christians who are determined to remain in such a fatally polluted fellowship are worthy of continued association. All one can expect from failing to part company with organized Christian religion during the tribulation is heartbreak, compromise, and extreme spiritual danger. For many, the prospect of shunning and ostracism will no doubt be hard to bear, but in truth, it will be a badge of honor and a true service to Jesus Christ. Therefore, Jesus too, in order that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, that is, his death on the cross, suffered outside the gate, that is, separated from fellowship. So then let us go out to him outside of the camp, that is, likewise choosing God over the world, bearing his reproach. For we do not have here on earth a city which is meant to be lasting. Rather, we are eagerly looking forward to the city that is destined to come, that is, the new Jerusalem. Hebrews 13, 12 through 14.